This lecture is part of an online undergraduate course in the theory of numbers and will be about the J Jacobi symbol. I'd better start by apologising to anybody who speaks German because I'm mispronouncing Jacobi. Uh, the proper German pronunciation is something closer to Jacobi, uh, but if I call it that then nobody in England or America will understand me so I will use the English pronunciation. So the, the Jacobi symbol is an extension of the Legendre symbol. So you remember we have the Legendre quadratic residue symbol defined for p an odd prime. And this is um, equal to plus 1 if a is a square not congruent to 0 and minus 1 if a is not a square and not congruent to 0. Um, and we saw last lecture that you can work this out using the quadratic reciprocity law but it is very annoying that the denominator has to be a prime because that means you need to keep factorising the numerator when you're working it out and factorisation can be really hard in general. Anyway, Jacobi found this really nice generalisation of the Jacobi symbol to, sorry, of the Legendre symbol where the denominator is now allowed to be any number. So, um, any odd number. So the Jacobi symbol is defined when b is odd and greater than zero and a is any integer. And it's defined very easily. You just factor b into a product of primes. So you write p1, p2 up to pn and you just make it multiplicative. Um, notice, by the way, that if, if b is 1, we've got an empty set here, so we find that a1 is just equal to plus 1. It's a special case of the usual convention on products of empty sets. Um, this definition seems a little bit silly uh, or bizarre, but we'll justify it fairly soon. I, I should put in one warning here. So um, a, b equals plus 1 does not imply a is a square. To see an example of this, let's just take b equals 15, which is 3 times 5. And let's suppose that a3 and a5 are both minus 1. Um, for example, we could just take a equals 2. And then you notice that a15 is equal to minus 1 times minus 1, which is plus 1. But a is certainly not a square mod 15. In fact, it's not even a square modulo 3. So um, the, 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 the interpretation of the Jacobi symbol is a little bit trickier than for the Legendre symbol. So let's write down some properties of the Jacobi symbol. So first of all, it has many of the properties of the, the Legendre symbol. So a1, b equals a2, b. If a1 is congruent to a2, modulo b, that follows almost immediately from the definition. Um, minus 1, b is equal to minus 1 to the um, uh, b minus 1 over 2 and again that follows easily from the definition and from the fact this is true when b is a prime. Um, 2b is again minus 1 to the b squared minus 1 over 8 which is equal to 1 if b is congruent to um, plus or minus 1 modulo 8 and minus 1 otherwise. So th these rules all go through just as before. Slightly more subtle is the quadratic reciprocity law also works. So a b is equal to minus 1 to the a minus 1 over 2 b minus 1 over 2 times b a. Here a and b are both odd and both greater than 0. And this follows from the quadratic reciprocity rule for primes if you do a little bit of work. So um, I'm feeling too lazy to do this, so I'll just leave this as an exercise. Um, um, and then uh, we've got multiplicativity, so a1, a2, b is equal to a1, b, a2, b, and the same thing works for denominators, so a, b1, b2 is equal to a, b1 times a, b2. 
Um, this follows almost instantly from the definition, and this follows easily from the property for Legendre symbols. Um, we've got a sort of periodicity on the bottom, but you have to be a little bit careful. So AB1 equals AB2 if B1 is congruent to B2 modulo 4A, um, not A. So um, the numerators only depend on A modulo B, but the, the denominators are a little bit funny. For example, if A is, e you, you can see this, if A is equal to minus 1, for example, then, then if you take B1 equals 3 and B2 equals 5, this fails modulo A. Um, it, it works modulo A if um, A is congruent to 1 modulo 4. Um, it's, it's very common in quadratic reciprocity for the things that are 1 modulo 4 to behave a little bit better than the things that are 3 modulo 4. Um, and now the, 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 the really big advantage of the Jacobi symbol is you can work out the quadratic reciprocity symbol fast even if a and b are large. Um, so we've actually had at least three ways of working it out. First of all you can work it out a really stupid way just by checking all numbers to see if they're squares. Um, secondly we could work it out reasonably fast using Euler's identity which says that it's equal to a to the um, b minus 1 over 2 mod b, at least if b is prime. And thirdly, we saw that we could work it out using the reciprocity law for Legendre symbol, except that involved factorising a. And the Jacobi symbol means we can sort of do the same thing, except we don't need to factorise a. So just as an example, let's work out minus 2002.99991, which is almost the same example we've had last time, except I've added a factor of minus 2 there. So what you have to do is you must first take out all the factors of minus 1 and 2 in order to make the, 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 the numerator um, odd. So this is minus 199991 times 299991 times 1001 And now um, this one is equal to minus 1 because that's 3 mod 4 and this one is equal to plus 1 because this is 7 modulo 8, so we get factors of minus 1 and plus 1. And now we have to work out this term, which is the one we did last time. So, so last time we had to start by factorising 1001 because um, we, we weren't allowed to put primers on the bottom. But with the Jacobi symbol, we, we, we don't need to factorise it. We, we, we can just use the quadratic reciprocity law and say this is equal to minus 999. 9, 1, 1001. So we get a minus sign from um, coming from there. Um, and now we can just reduce the numerator modulo the denominator and if I work this out right this comes to 892 modulo uh, over 1001. And then we take out the factors of 2 squared and we find this is minus 2, 2, 3, 1001. And now we use quadratic reciprocity again to invert this, so we get this is now minus 1001, 2, 2, 3, because 1001 is 1 mod 4. And then we divide and take a remainder again, which is minus 109, 2, 2, 3. And um, then we uh, use quadratic reciprocity again, and we find this is minus 2, 2, 3, 109. And then we divide again, and we find that this is um, um, minus 5, 109. And then this is equal to minus 109, 5, using quadratic reciprocity yet again. And now this is equal to minus 4, 5. And we can take out factors of 2, and this gives us um, minus 1, 5, which is equal to... Um, 
which is equal to minus 1 because 1 is a quadratic residue of 5. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice that it's very, very similar to Euler's algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor of two numbers. We're constantly switching the numbers and dividing one by the other. The only slight difference is we have to take out factors of 2 because we're only allowed to switch the numbers when both are odd. Um, actually, you remember I gave an algorithm for greatest common divisor which was even faster than Euclid's algorithm because instead of dividing um, the numerator by the denominator, you could just make the numerator and the denominator both odd and then just subtract the denominator from the numerator or vice versa. Um, and you can do exactly the same thing for the Jacobi symbol. In fact, it's even better designed for the Jacobi symbol because you have to take out factors of two anyway. So, so the, the, the fastest algorithm for this, you, you, you shouldn't really do long division because long division is really tiresome. What, what you should do is really just subtract 2, 2, 3 from 1,001 and then take out factors of 2 and continue. Now, that takes a, a slightly more steps, but the, as I said, the steps don't involve doing long division, which is a real headache. So we can work out Legendre and Jacobi symbols really fast. Um, and um, because they're so easy to work out, they're, they're a sort of fundamental idea, a fundamental part of computational number theory. I mean, if you've got, if, if, if A and B have a million digits, it's still no big problem to work out the Jacobi symbol. So one thing we can do is um, we can improve our prime tests. So you remember one way of testing to, to see if n is prime is to look at a to the n and see if a to the n is congruent to a modulo n for various values of a. And if this fails, then n is definitely not prime. And if it's true, well, n is probably prime. But you remember for n equals 5, 6, 1, um, a to the n is congruent to a mod n for all a. But 5, 6, 1 is not prime divisible by 3 for a start and by 11 and so on. So um, the, the simple-minded application of Fermat's theorem doesn't really work for, for a few numbers. I mean it works nearly all the time but there are these occasional exceptions and what we can do is we can improve this using the Jacobi symbol. So here we have a sort of Jacobi test. Um, if n is prime this implies a to the n minus 1 over 2 is congruent to a n modulo n. So we can test to see if this is true. For example, let's take n to be this troublesome number 561 and let's take a to be 5. Then we've got to work out 5 to the 280 and compare it with 5, um, 5 6, 1. Um, and see if they're the same. And if they're not the same, then, then, then this number 561 is definitely not prime. Well, we can work out this using quadratic reciprocity. So this is equal to 5615, which is equal to 1, 5, which is equal to plus 1. And we can work out this number here um, by using the usual algorithm for working out something to the power of something modulo um, something else and it turns out to be 67 and you see 67 is not equal to plus 1 so 561 is not prime. Actually you notice we didn't really need to work out the Jacobi symbol here because we could have just worked all we need to know is the Jacobi symbol has to be either plus or minus 1 and 67 is not only plus 1 but it's not minus 1 either so in this particular example we didn't really need to work out the Jacobi symbol. Um, but in general, the Jacobi symbol will, will sometimes help you to eliminate more numbers. So we can get an improved primality test, which, which is, is much more like, to, well, slightly more like to work than the, the, than, than the Fermat test. Um, well, you know that the, the, the definition of the Jacobi symbol saying a, p1, p2, and so on is equal to a, p1, a, p2, and so on looks really artificial. Um, there's a, a sort of neater description of it found by Zolotarev. Um, he showed that the Jacobi symbol AB is equal to the sine of the permutation 
x goes to x times a on z modulo bz. Um, that works, um, here we're taking a and b both to be odd and greater than zero. So let, let me explain what the sign of the permutation is. So, so multiplying by a is a bijection on this set z modulo bz. And um, you, you call these a permutation. So permutation is just a map from a set, um, say, 1 op to b to itself. And a permutation has a sign, and the sign is given as follows. So what we do is we take variables x1, x2, up to xb, and we multiply x1 minus x2, x1 minus x3, x2 minus x3, and so on. So this is just equal to the product of i less than j of xi minus xj. And if we call this number delta, well, if we apply the permutation to all the xi's, it permutes the xi's. And you can see that delta <coughs> is going to get changed to either plus delta or minus delta if, if, we, if we renumber all the variables. So, so x2 minus x3 might get changed to x3 minus x2 and it might not be in, and we'd pick up a sign. And similarly, we might get lots of signs. Um, and Zolotev found that AB is just the sign of the permutation of uh, given by A given by multiplication by a, given by, well, x goes to ax. Um, and let's see why this is true. Um, so I'll just quickly sketch why this is true. Well, first of all, if you've got a permutation on various numbers, one, two, three, four, five, let's do six, say. So you might have a permutation which is multiplication by two. Um, and um, um, multiplication by 2 modulo 7 will sort of do this. It will take 3 to 6, um, 6 to 5, and 5 to 3. So you see the permutation can be written as a, 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 as a union of cycles. And um, the rule for the sign of a cycle is very easy. So an odd cycle is an even permutation and an even cycle is an odd permutation. So an even permutation is one that, that gives you a sign plus one when you apply it to delta and an odd permutation is one that takes delta to minus delta. So as usual in mathematics the terminology is a bit of a mess. And this is quite easy to check. For example, if you've got a, a cycle of length 2, that's just taking 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, you can see that takes x1, exchanges x1 and x2, so delta in this case would be x1 minus x2 and changes sign. If you've got a, a, a cycle of length 3, it looks like this, and here we would have x1 minus x2, x2 minus x3, x1 minus x3, and you can check this goes to x2 minus x3, x3 minus x1 times um, x3 minus, uh, wait a moment, uh, x3 minus x1, hang on, that doesn't look right. Oh, that should be an x1. So that would be x2 minus x1. And you can check that this, um, is equal to plus one times that. And you can check um, other cycles similarly. Um, now we want to see that something, if something is a quadratic residue, then it gives you an even cycle, and if it's a quadratic non-residue, then it gives you an odd cycle. Well, let's take g to be a primitive root. Then um, we get one goes to g, goes to g squared, goes to, goes to g to the uh, b minus 1, and this is a cycle of length um, b, which is even. 
And you remember, even cycles give you odd permutations. So x goes to um, x times g is an odd permutation. And now um, we know that um, a is a quadratic residue is equivalent to saying a is equal to g to the n with n even and a quadratic non-residue is equivalent to a equals g to the n with n odd. And um, these are um, even permutations and these are odd permutations because multiplication by g is an odd permutation so the nth power of g is either even or odd depending. So, so this shows that um, a p for p prime is um, plus one plus or minus one depending on the permutation x goes to a x being even or odd. So that, that proves the result for p prime. For, p, for, 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 for b composite, the same is true for a b. Um, here you have to use the fact that a b is equal to a p1 times a p2 and so on. And um, I'm just going to leave this bit as a little exercise because I'm feeling too lazy to do it. Um, so Zolotarev gave a very neat interpretation of the Jacobi symbol for all odd a and b. In fact, he was able to prove a quadratic reciprocity law, giving a proof depending on this interpretation in terms of odd and even permutations. Um, OK, I'll just finish by saying a little bit about the Kronecker symbol. So the Kronecker symbol is also written a, b, and this is now defined for all integers a and b. So you remember the Jacobi symbol had this slightly annoying feature that, that b had to be odd and positive. And um, the Kronecker symbol eliminates this by defining it for all b, but um, I should warn you the definition is a little bit funny. So we define a2 to be 1 if a is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 8 and minus 1 if a is congruent to plus or minus 3 mod 8. I should have said that this is going to be plus or minus 1 if a and b are co-prime and naught if a and b are not co-prime. So this covers, the, so, so if a is even this is automatically 0 and we define a minus 1 to be 1 if a is greater than or equal to 0 and minus 1 if a is less than 0. And then as before we define a plus or minus p1 pn to be a plus or minus 1 a p1 into a pn. Um, and the problem is that the Kronecker symbol behaves a little bit oddly. For example, um, a b, um, a one b, and a two b may be different if um, a one is congruent to a two mod b. So, well, it's, they're sometimes not equal. So periodicity breaks down, and um, you also want to define um, a zero. We define that to be plus one. And the trouble is this makes multiplicativity break down a little bit. For example, minus one zero is not equal to one zero times minus one three. Because that's one and that's minus one and that's one. And you might think, well, we could fix that by changing minus one zero to be minus one. But that doesn't work either because you would then find out that minus one zero was not equal to one zero times minus one one. So you can't quite get multiplicativity if you insist on defining this for all a and b. Um, it, it still satisfies the multiplicativity condition as long as a and b are both non-zero. So the Kronecker symbol definitely has a few kind of glitches in it. Um, you should also notice that this is um, not the Legendre symbol for a 
for p equals 2. For the Legendre symbol, if you defined it for the prime 2, it would have to be plus 1 whenever a is odd. And this is why this is one of the reasons why it's actually a bad idea to define the Legendre symbol when the denominator is 2, because it then conflicts with the Kronecker symbol. Um, and you might ask, why did Kronecker have this rather funny definition of the Kronecker symbol? Um, well, the reason for this definition, as we will see later, is that the Kronecker symbol AB for primes P gives you the decomposition of a prime P in a quadratic extension of discriminant A, um, which we might cover later when we discuss quadratic fields. So there is actually a, a really good reason for defining A2 in this slightly bizarre looking way. OK, um, next lectures might be on um, binary quadratic forms.